Hey, what's happening guys? Uh, first of all, before we get started today, I want to thank a couple of my wonderful viewers who got me a couple things off my Amazon wish list. We got a pack of 1K ohm resistors, half watt, 5%, 100 pieces. We also got 100K ohm, half watt, 10 pieces. And some very nice Kim wipes. Not naming any names, you know who you are. Thank you very much. All right, next up, or for today's video rather, I'm sure you guys think I never listen when you give me ideas for videos. Especially Michael P, who thinks I'm never going to do his IOT or his um, I squared C video. I am. But um, a Chinese company called Rayx offered to send me some of these goodies here. So this is going to knock out one of the requests I've gotten. And that is, <laughs> if I can ever get it open, Laura. Uh, Laura and the Arduino. So Laura stands for long range. And this particular one is the RL896 module from Rayax. So it's um, using around the uh, 896 megahertz. That would be the very high frequency band, or is it the ultra high? UHF. Yeah, this is UHF. And uh, let's take a look at the spec sheets on these before we get into playing with it. Okay, I do apologize for the background noise. It's like 90 degrees and 90% humidity here in Ohio. We went directly from winter to August. So my air conditioner is running. Okay, this again is the uh, RYL R896. And it is the 868-915 megahertz LoRa module. It's an antenna transceiver with a UART interface. And I'm going to get into that in a minute to explain to you what that means, but it uses the Semtec SX1276 engine. It has a low current, high sensitivity, and don't want to, there we go. And it is controlled by AT commands, so if you're old like me, you remember AT commands from the old uh, 300, 1200, 2400, 56k baud modem days. 127 decibel dynamic RSSI and it's designed with PC integrated antenna which means the antenna is pre-wired to the board for you. Not going to get into a lot of uh, other stuff for this but if we look at the interface here it is really quite simple. We have VDD for our power supply. We have an active low reset. We have RX, we have TX and we have ground. So you're going to hook this up to your Arduino through the serial port. Nothing to it. That makes things really nice. There's a block diagram. There's some information. I'll leave that up there. Or why don't you just pause the video if you, <laughs> if you want to read that. Dimensions are, it's quite small. We'll hold it up to a nano when we check it out. And you'll be able to see a little bit more about that. Now let's take a look at the AT commands. So here we have our AT command guide. And very nice, they're telling us the sequence in which we need to do the command. So our first command is going to be AT plus address. And that's simply going to be a byte to give each of your LoRa modules an address. And then next will be AT plus network ID to set the ID of the LoRa network. Again, you can see here, it's just going to be a byte. And all the modules communicating together need to be on the same network. Now we have AT plus band. And that's going to set the center frequency. And then we have AT plus parameter to set our wireless parameters. We have a spreading factor, which I believe is probably the bandwidth. So the larger the bandwidth, the better sensitivity, but the transmission will take longer. Oh no, because next is bandwidth. Hmm. Smaller bandwidth, better sensitivity. Okay, so bandwidth is opposite of spreading factor. Well, that's interesting. 
we have a coding rate. The coding rate will be fastest to set to one. Oh, good to know. And then we have the program preamble. And what's very nice is they've shown us how to set up a couple of basic commands here. So if we're going to communicate within three kilometers, we're going to set our AT parameter 10717. So that would be 10717. Pretty simple. Then it goes through all of the specs for this. You see we can also set the uh, UART rate. Anyway, if you get yourself one of these, and I'll put a link down below where you can, you can read up on all this goodness. All right, let's get back to the device. Well, there is one thing I forgot. I mean, we might as well talk about it now before we get back to the device. And that is how are we going to send values from one Arduino to another. And we're going to use it with the serial write command, which can send a single value, a string of values, or a buffer and a length. So that would be an array. And you can see how it is here. Void setup, serial begin in our loop. Serial write 45. We send a byte with a value of 45. And that's all we have to do. We can also send a string. And to read it on the reading or the receiving Arduino, we will be using the serial read. And we're going to do this on nanos probably, so we'll only be using the serial read. You don't have to worry about the numbers. And that's it. Now we'll get over to the device. All right, let's get started with our setup. And we will make this our receiving Arduino. So just a nano. Plug it into the old breadboard here. And just while I'm talking, this is going to work with any MCU that you can think of. Arduino, Raspberry Pi, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what MCU you're using. It's going to work and it's going to work just fine because basically all you're doing is that we're passing serial data back and forth. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take 5 volt from the Arduino, put it up there to the power rail, and then from the power rail, we're going to go to the first pin on to the left here, which is the power pin. Then again, from the Arduino, we'll grab the ground, put it up to the ground rail, and then the ground from the LoRa module, which is the pin on the opposite side, will also go to the ground rail. Okay, next up we need to attach our RX and our TX and of course you're going to have to swap them so TX from the Arduino goes to RX which is pin number three on the LoRa module and RX from the Arduino goes to pin 4 which is TX on our LoRa module and then one final connection we're going to make here for this anyway is pin 2 which is our reset we're going to send that to oh I don't know D3 I guess is fine doesn't matter so now our LoRa module is set up, and since I said this is going to be the receiver, we're going to put in a uh, an OLED so we can see what's going on, and that OLED wires up pretty easily. If 
VCC to the ground rail. I'm sorry, VCC to the power rail. Ground to the ground rail. And then I need to grab a couple more wires. Data is A4. And clock is A5. So that's our hardware connection for our receiver. Next we'll do the hardware connection for our transmitter. Okay, I grabbed an Uno this time just to show you that it really doesn't matter which way you hook them up or what Arduino you use. So there's our LoRa module there. And again, starting from the left, the first pin is power, which goes to our power rail. And the pin all the way on the right is ground, which goes to our ground rail. This one is reset. This one is RX, pin 3 RX, goes to TX on the Arduino. And then TX on the LoRa module goes to RX on the Uno. And again, we need our reset pin, which is pin number two. And I'm going to put it on D3, just like we did with the other one. So now we have our transmitting unit and our receiving unit wired up. And this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to stop it here. And then in our next one, we'll write a simple software program and see how far these guys can really transmit. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.